Hi guys and welcome to Casual Corner. Uh, so today I'm going to be doing a tournament report on a game that I played over the holidays. Um, we haven't had, uh, we took a week off to, of filming to do holidays and everything with the kids being home from school and stuff. It got really hard to try and actually get content together. Um, so now we're back on schedule. Uh, but that also means that I'm going to be telling you about a tournament that happened a couple of weeks ago, uh, right before New Year's. Actually, it happened like the day before New Year's. And funny story, I have actually already filmed this, but, um, I wasn't in the frame. <laughs> so I wasn't able to. One thing about, you know, filming on your own, uh, when you don't have a cameraman, things happen. Uh, so this was a tournament that we did right before New Year's and I thought it would be fun to kind of do like a New Year's -y theme. So uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, but there was a poll that I put out. Many of you did vote on it. Thank you very much for that. Of uh, What theme I should use, whether I should use future or past. And then someone wrote in exiles and I got all excited, but it didn't win. Um, so the winning theme actually ended up being future. So I decided to go with Days of Future Past because that's kind of my go-to any time that I use the future keyword. And it was a Golden Age tournament, so I wanted to actually use some Golden Age pieces. Although one of them that I didn't, that wasn't Golden Age, was the bishop that uh, was a prize from the WKOs. So I used that bishop, and then I had Storm and Franklin Richards from the Days of Future Past uh, Gravity Feed set. And then I used a really, really old... Colonel Logan. Now, it wasn't the one that came out in the Fast Forces. Uh, sorry, Fantastic Forces. Uh, it was the one that came out in the box set that came with Colonel Logan, the Hound, and a Sentinel. That was the first uh, Days of Future Past collector set thing that we got. Um, so, we only had four people for a tournament, uh, much like the Star Trek tournament that I went to, but this is the end of the year and uh, it's just a slow time for people to come out to tournaments with the holidays and everything like that. So this just kind of happens. I mean, it was uh, me and Jason, our buddy Aiden, and then usually just one other person, whoever was there. So for the first round, I ended up going up against Jason. Um, now he was playing Justice Riders, which is actually kind of funny because at one point in the poll, uh, Past was winning and I had made a Justice Riders team and then Jason ended up playing it because I played Future instead. Uh, but he did make one change. He ended up going with Colonel Wayne instead of Sergeant Kent, which I had originally gone with. Uh, so he had Colonel Wayne, Diana Prince Justice Rider, John Jones Justice Rider, Kid Flash, and a Clockwork Man. Uh, so we ended up on the Central City map. And uh, for those of you unaware, the Central City map has one side of it is the bridge going to the Keystone City map and then a strip of street with buildings along either side. And this is actually one of those fascinating maps because it has pretty much all types of terrain and four different elevations. Um, so I've always really, really liked this map. Um, now there's uh, pockets of hindering terrain down the middle street. And he had Colonel Wayne coming through there with his clockwork man and I had Colonel Logan in there and we were all just utilizing our stealth. Uh, and hindering so our shooters went up on the roofs and we couldn't shoot down to um, the guys because they were in hindering but we also didn't have enough range to shoot across the buildings to each other so we were just kind of positioning on the buildings and then the guys on the ground were slowly moving forward towards each other and then it finally culminated in like a big blast and that happened when I had made a placement mistake by going to the side the building that Jason had been sitting on but not really thinking much about his range and the fact that I would have been tokened and he wasn't tokened so then he was free that uh, that turn to come around swing around to the other side of the building and basically just blast away at me so Storm just got annihilated by Wonder Woman like right off the bat she was just dead um and then John Jones came in and started just kind of like Sitting next to Franklin Richards, hadn't attacked him yet, and uh, Kid Flash had shot at uh, Bishop because Bishop wasn't able to make it all the way across to the building where Storm was. He was down below, so Kid Flash started shooting there. Now, unfortunately, at that point, I had uh, forgotten about Bishop's trait, where if he gets hit with a range attack, he heals one damage, and... Um, uh, he heals one damage and takes an action token off. So I'd forget forgotten about that, so he took the full damage. Um, and then I was trying to attack back with Franklin, and I'd hit the first time, not realizing that at this point in his dial, 
he was only doing one damage because <laughs> he gets two damage later on but on his first click he only does one damage so unfortunately that didn't get through john jones toughness and but did manage to completely confuse jason <laughs> uh and then uh colonel logan was able to get close enough to try and attack uh the clockwork man and colonel wayne uh now the one thing about these really old dials is that they're really really long um colonel logan in particular has like eight or nine clicks or something and his stats are pretty fair throughout the whole thing so he can just keep going um and but unfortunately i had uh most most of my guys taken down it wasn't long before bishop got taken out and franklin was trying to attack back but then jason managed to get his shape change uh so it wasn't long before him and then all i had left was colonel logan he did manage to take out a clockwork man with him but he got obliterated because Jason's entire team came after him because uh, he only has his stealth for like the first two or three clicks. Um, and then we were done, like within 15 minutes or something of a 15 minute round. And it was like, oh, uh, so what are we going to do now? So like we had like a huge break in between rounds. Um, and then my second round was against my friend Aiden. Um, now, the way that we have our maps at our venue is that they're placked. So they're nice, like, wooden boards with the maps on top of them. And um, they were made a long time ago, so pretty much every map that's on there is Golden Age at this point, but they're really fun to pull out whenever we play a Golden Age tenant. Uh, when we're playing Modern, we pull them out, but we use them to place the Modern Age maps on top of them. Uh, it's just a good way to be able to fit more people on the tables in the play area. Uh, so we ended up doing that, and we pulled out Krakoa. Now, when you play Krakoa, especially in Golden Age, you play by the Krakoa rules. So, uh, his team was Ultimate X-Men, and it was Cyclops, Marvel Girl, Beast, Storm, and Scarlet Witch, because apparently she got the keyword and the team ability, I, Ultimates. So, but on also on his team, he had the Book of the Skull. So, he was using that to kind of mitigate the fact that the older... Um, clicks because these were from the actual ultimate set um, like from 2005 or something like that um, so like super super old uh, clicks but uh, the book of the skull with giving plus two attack with every hammer you end up like kind of mitigating those lower stats so we we're weaving through the hindering on Krakoa and Cyclops had gone up to the elevated and I had Colonel Logan go up to elevation with him and um, he was having a hard time, we were having a hard time getting a line of fire of each other because right in the center of the map is Krakoa's head and is blocking terrain. But by round two with playing with the Krakoa rules, uh, he rolled a six, which is the attack with Krakoa. Now Krakoa ends up having a 10 range with him being in the middle of the map. He pretty much sees the whole map. He ignores pretty much all uh, map terrain and he has a 10 attack with a three damage. So he ended up targeting Franklin Richards and rolled a critical hit which just, oh gosh, it crippled him so hard. Um, so he was pretty much useless at that point. He was on his last click. Um, and then for my turn, I ended up trying to move forward with Storm and Bishop and doing attacks. But for my critical roll, I ended up rolling Earthquake, which I believe is the four on the die roll. And that is deal one damage to everybody on the map. Um, now it's not penetrating, so anybody with toughness or invulnerable or any damage reducers uh, won't take the damage, but that pretty much meant like almost our entire teams were taking damage. Also meant that that killed Franklin Richards. So Franklin Richards died to Krakoa without ever being touched by any other figure. Uh, so he was dead, but I managed to have Colonel Logan come in on Cyclops and Bishop and Storm uh, went in on Beast and Marvel Girl. And I remembered Bishop's actual uh, trait this time. So he was healing and taking action tokens off. Now, um, he doesn't have to be damaged, or I think he doesn't even have to be hit. He just has to be targeted which range or something like that. Anyways, it's, it's a really good power. And uh, it got to the point where um, his stats were beginning to drop. Mine were pretty stable, and his dice gave up on him. And he wasn't able to hit my guys. My guys were able to hit back. Uh, so it was a back and forth, and... Like, Colonel Logan took a beating, but he was able to give it back to, uh, to Cyclops, took him out, took out Storm, uh, my Storm took out his Beast, Bishop started picking off Scarlet Witch and Jean Grey, or Marvel Girl, rather. 
and it's got to the point where my team just kind of walked over his. But, uh, I didn't completely take out either Mar Marvel Girl or Scarlet Witch because Krakoa's Earthquakes did it for me. <laughs> so there was a lot of damage just being dealt through the actual map, and I got to a point where Bishop had toughness and, um, like Wolverine or Colonel Logan had toughness so like I wasn't taking damage from the earthquakes but he was so that kind of helped in my favor too so I ended up taking out his team so I ended up winning that round. <clears throat> now my final round uh, is a local guy named Sean. Now he comes in, uh, he's actually one of our Yu-Gi-Oh players. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh for the tournament schedule ends up getting played in the mornings before Hero Clicks. So he's usually there, he's not a usual hero clicks player but because of the Yu-Gi-Oh tournament that came out he learned how to play the game for the Yu-Gi-Oh pieces then kept the Yu-Gi-Oh pieces and every so often when we have a golden age tournament like this he'll actually come out and bring his his team so he played with us and he had um, a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh guys and unfortunately I'm just not gonna remember the names of them he had the um, healer of mystic faith I think it was called um, a jar thing, a tank, and a robot. Like, <laughs> the tank and the robot, I know there's another one and they make another big robot. It's one of the fusion ones. Um, but anyways, his, it wasn't the morphing jar, but one of his, like, jar things has an ability on it where uh, opposing characters minus two to their, to their attack, unless they're attacking him, and then he is minus two to his defense. So he basically just made a big target of this guy, but he was really good at keeping it away from me. So he pretty much stayed close to his uh, starting area. And one of the, I think it was the tank, gave a, a adjacent friendly characters plus one defense. And then, and like plus one damage or something. And then, uh, and then he also had his, his healer guy, his mystic faith guy was prob. So he had this guy really well protected and it was on the Yu-Gi-Oh! Forest map, which is pretty much all hindering. So I moved up to where we were pretty much at his starting area. And I sat my guys in hindering. Now both Storm and Bishop are ranged guys, but they have energy shield deflection. And this guy that I was attacking had energy shield too. So he was getting plus two from his energy shield, plus one from the tank, but then minus two because of his ability, and then plus one for being in hindering. So... It ended up making him really, really difficult to shoot at, but I also didn't want to go in close because my guys were really well protected with energy shield. So with energy shield and the hindering, it meant that pretty much all of us were rolling, needing to roll 10s and 11s just to hit. So that was most of the game, was us rolling, trying to get a 10 or 11 just to hit each other through all of these ridiculous bonuses, and then I had Colonel Logan, meantime, was dancing around the bushes around the outside to try and come around and base this jar thing um and at one point he had actually hopped into like a single square of hindering which was like a bush or something and he uh sean had set off a trap which like dealt a damage and an action token or something and it was like a hole or something and i just burst out laughing because it ended up being so ridiculously thematic that wolverine jumped into a bush but it wasn't actually a bush it was a hole like how many times does that happen in cartoons or comics or anything like that where it's just like, oh, look at this like bush here. No, 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 there's a hole underneath it. So it's just absolute fantastic booby trap. We were both absolutely laughing at this. And uh, when it got to the point where eventually he went out on the rolls, where he was able to hit the 10 that he needed to take down Bishop. And then that got rid of his energy shield deflection, even though he was able to heal and take action tokens off. It still took him off the energy shield deflection and he was basically able with three attacks just to take him out that turn. So then I was left with Storm, but Storm had Frank and Richards behind her who was giving her enhancement. So if she did hit, she was doing extra damage. Um, but it was a few more. Now he needed an 11 to hit Storm back. So I was pretty safe in the fact that like it was really hard for him to hit her. So we're just turns and turns, rolling, 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 rolling. Finally, Colonel Logan comes around the back of this jar thing and bases him so that it gets rid of his energy shield. He still has the plus one from the tank being next to him, but he gets the minus two because I'm attacking him. So it brought him down enough that Colonel Logan was able to take this guy out. But then that also focused his 
damage on Colonel Logan. Um, so it wasn't long before Colonel Logan got taken out, but that also freed up Storm to use her attacks against the other guys. So she was able to take out the Faith Healer. Uh, Colonel Logan helped take out the Faith, uh, Mystic Healer of Mystic Faith, whatever it was called. Um, and got rid of his prob, which is pretty much what I needed, because there was a few times where I hit high enough to damage him, but then he would prob it, and then I wouldn't roll that 9 or 10 that I needed again. So once his prob was gone, then I'm like, all right, we'll do this. Colonel Logan got down, so I'm down to just Storm and Franklin Richards. But now that I'm not being probed, I don't have ridiculous modifications on me, I'm now able to maneuver where I need to go and just shoot him, and then it got to the point where... I was able to take out the rest of his team with just Storm and the extra damage that she was getting with the enhancement from Franklin Richards. So that uh, put me in with two wins for the tournament. Um, and Jason ended up winning with three, going 3-0 three and o because that's... <laughs> I mean, when it came down to it, the with the Justice Riders being the only modern age team, it really showed what uh, the older cliques had, like the problems that the older cliques had versus something that was made like last year. Um, with the, like, just the low, low stats, and even though they have the longer dials, when you get to the end of the dial there, you're looking at, like, a 5 attack and a 13 defense. Like, you're not doing anything like that. They're just sitting there waiting to die, basically. Um, so, but it was still a lot of fun to see these, these figures come out, because we don't see them very often with playing in Modern Age very, uh, more often than we do in, in Golden Age. Yeah, so just all around, fun tournament. Glad to have done it. Good way to just cap off the year. Um, and that was Casual Corner for today. Uh, what have you guys been playing? How have your casual games been going? Let me know in the comments down below, and we'll see you guys next time for another episode of Casual Corner. <laughs>